This interview is with Ian Briggs. He's 62 years old. He's based near Blackpool and he works for Rolls-Royce. Now, Ian, we just heard in the introduction there, you had uh, been incredibly horrifically impacted by the situation. Can you tell us a little bit about your story? Um, six months ago, um, I got a telephone call from Gavin's fiance that he had uh, not come home. And uh, we spent three days trying to find him. Uh, police got involved. And eventually on the Friday night, I got the phone call everyone dreads that they'd found his body. Um, completely out of the blue, we'd spent the weekend before with him. Um, we'd been building his barbecue shack. He was a bit brilliant barbecuer. And yeah, we was happy. He was normal, his normal self, life and centre of the party. And yeah, just completely out of the blue. So we knew he'd been having some problems where he worked, um, uh, some, some issues with stuff. But what we didn't know was that the CMS had been chasing him for nearly a year for ridiculous amounts of money. I found three letters addressed to Gavin from CMS, uh, one dated back in 2019, two in 2020, and one we actually got the day after that he took his life. So I started looking through the figures and it just didn't make any sense. Uh, obviously at the time I was fairly um, uptight and emotional and couldn't make any sense of it. And it took me uh, a few weeks to actually sit down, go through the figures and figure out what was actually going on. So I eventually worked out that Gavin had been investigated by the CMS Financial Investigation Unit. <clears throat> and they'd come up with this set of figures the first thing that didn't ring true with me was that they'd worked his income out to be around about 50 to 54,000 pounds a year, which from his bank statements and everything I've got is, is about right. That's what he was earning. But they have this figure of additional income of 26,000 pounds. And we can't figure out where that figure has come from. Um, I've got a rough idea where they might have got it from. I think it's a massive mistake they've made, but it's a fictional figure, basically. So they were working out his income as £76,000 a year. They said that was his income because they added this £26,000 to his, what he was actually getting. On top of that, um, Gavin has, he's actually had two failed marriages, so he's got two families that he's paying for. Uh, one of them was done through the court order. So he was paying for two kids through a court order of £269 a week, uh, which I know he's been paying because um, I've got his bank statements and everything. And the CMS were, uh, from what I can make out from the letters, the CMS were going to take another £1,000 a month over and above that figure. And then there was also an arrears figure of £15,000, which we couldn't work out where it's come from because we know how long Gavin's been paying maintenance. We have all the bank statements, his bank statements, et cetera, et cetera. How he came to this £15,000 arrears, I didn't, couldn't find out. So I tried talking to the CMS um, the first telephone conversation I had with them, they would actually talk to me, the guy that I got. pulled Gavin's um, information up on his screen and he could not explain any of the figures. He, he was just, he was on there for about half an hour. He says, I cannot work out where any of these figures have come from. And he said he'd have to get back to me. Um, I can't remember whether I had another phone conversation or not, but I then got an anonymous phone call from somebody within the CMS and it rang alarm bells because his first line of the telephone conversation was all telephone calls from and to the CMS are recorded. This telephone conversation is not being recorded. And he emphasized that it's not being recorded. And then he said, I can't remember the exact wording of the conversation, but it went along the lines of, I can't give you yes and no answers, but I will give you whatever information I can 
without um, giving yes or no answers. And I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> so the conversation I eventually worked out, if I asked him, a, if I stated a fact, then he would, his answer would be read between the lines and I'm not going to argue with you. So I said to him, I said, the, the £26,000 additional income, I believe is an incorrect figure. It's a false figure, which he responded, I'm not going to argue with you. Read between the lines, which to me says that I'm right. Yeah. I did the same with the arrears figure. I asked him the same question. I believe this arrears figure is complete rubbish. And again, he said, read between the lines. I'm not going to argue with you. And then I asked him if the CMS were intending to take another thousand pounds over and above the court order that he was already paying. And again, he said, read between the lines, I'm not going to argue with you. Um, he then, the conversation went on a little bit more and he then said to me, he says, uh, we, he would like to get some justice for Gavin. Let's try and get some justice for Gavin. And he ended the telephone conversation with, um, I'll call you back officially in 10, 15 minutes, which he did. And at that point, um, he said, right, um, are you an administrator or executor of Gavin's will? And I said, well, no, I'm not. There was no will, so there's no executors. And I can't be an administrator because I'm not Gavin's next of kin. I can't apply to be an administrator. It can only be next of kin, which is the three boys they are all minors. And he says, well, we can't talk to you then. We can't tell you anything. And I said, yeah, but I'm his father. And I said, no, you yeah, can't. a heartbreaking situation. So Gavin had three children, is that right? Yes, yeah, yeah. And he was paying £269 a week. He was, was £50,000 200... arrears, and he was also expected to pay another £1,000 a month. And you think yeah, that this, yeah. this is why he committed suicide? Yeah, yeah, effectively. When, you, when I sat down and worked out the figures... He was paying the 269 a week and he was paying about, I think it was about 800 to 1,000 pounds for the other one a month. So he was already paying out um, over, getting on for two grand. But when I sat down and worked out what they were going to take off of him, they were going to take off of him 2,669 pounds a month. They'd have left him with 153 pounds a week to survive on. A month, sorry, to survive on. Well, it's just... Sorry, and carry on. I've, yeah, I've subsequently found out with the arrears figures um, that the CMS was going to pay arrears to one of the ex-wives of £7,555 in arrears. That was all she was owed. So there's £15,000. They've told Gavin he owes £15,000. They've told the ex-wife that she's only in there going to get £7,555. Where is the other £8,000 going? So this was, a, this was all new to you. I know we're going to speak to, yeah. in a minute, Solicitor Daniel Milliken, who's been looking into your case, and we'll be able to talk a little bit more about it then. What yeah. did you do? Did you, where did you go for help, and where are you at right now? Well, the first thing I did was I, I tried the CMS and um, the guy that I talked to told me to speak to my MP. Um, so I wrote to my MP and basically he started off, he came back and yeah, there's nothing he could do about it. It's general data Who is protection. your MP? Can you say who your MP uh, is? Yeah, Marcus Fish. Okay. Um, so I thought, well, I need some legal help here. So I went to four different solicitors none of them would touch it none of them were interested nobody wanted to take my money i went to the uh uh around about that point um i saw one of craig and um, clive's podcasts about somebody else and yeah, kind of it was about a fireman who was very nearly to what cabin did um, tore me apart at the time, I couldn't talk about it or anything. It just, and I commented on there. And then um, I think I saw another one of their podcasts and they, they, they contacted me and started talking to me and I did a podcast for them. But Craig put me in contact with all sorts of people that I could write to. 
So I've written to Arlene Sugden, uh, emailed her, written to her. I've had no responses. The only responses I get back are, we can't talk to you because of general data protection rules. General data protection rules only apply to living personnel. So they don't actually apply to Gavin, but they are hiding behind this general data protection rule saying they can't talk to me. I've emailed um, Baroness Stedman Scott. Um, I've emailed ugh, the list is endless, all sorts of people. Um, I've emailed Johnny Mercer. He's a the veterans, supposedly veterans representative. We're both veterans. I did uh, 29 years in the Air Force. Gavin did 15 years in the Air Force. We are both veterans. Nothing, nothing. Um, I've eventually got, I've written to the ICE, all the complaints bodies. Nobody will, nobody will take it on. They come back to me and say, we can't do anything until you go through the CMS complaints uh, procedure. I can't go through the CMS complaints procedure because they won't talk to me. They're adamant they won't talk to me. Um, so... I went back to my MP and he's actually started to um, do something for me. And I think I embarrassed him into doing it. And he has now, we've now put a application into the parliamentary and health ombudsman for an investigation to be carried out. Um, and with, a, with getting involved with Craig and everything and all the stuff that's going on, it's, it's horrendous what the CMS are doing. There are so many other people in the same boat as Gavin with these false figures coming in. Where they get them from, nobody can explain. Um, it's just, and nobody is interested. Nobody will do anything about it. That's the toughest bit that I've found, is that nobody seems to care that a 40-year-old man was driven to where he was for money that he didn't owe. He didn't owe the arrears. He didn't earn that £26,000. And they were going to take absolutely crazy amounts of money off of him that he just couldn't afford. Well, I bet he's incredibly proud of his dad. He's doing everything <laughs> he can to fight for him. And thank you for bringing uh, this story to our attention. I'm going to speak to Craig now, Craig Bullman. And um, I don't think this is a story that's going to go away straight away. If people want to um who've been in a similar situation to you and don't know where to go where would you recommend are you on any facebook groups or can they contact you directly um uh, yeah i've been talking to loads of people loads of people if you want to contact me yeah contact me um craig is an amazing guy he's he's been on this for years and he's he's really good um there is a couple of facebook sites um i think the one best one I'm on is the um, CMS, CSM ripoffs. I can't remember the exact name of the site. We'll put but them in the a... description. We'll put them in the description. So if anyone's watching, they can see them in the description of this video. Yeah. Thank you so yeah. much for talking to me. It's an incredibly difficult time for you. It was only six months ago that this happened. Thank you very yeah. much for sharing your story. You take care. And you. Thank you. Bye.